This talk is about a live coding tool for Racket, imaginatively called RS, the Racket Sequencer. I'll talk about the reason it came about, the why, if you will, and I'll give a bird's eye overview of how it works. Then we'll delve a little deeper into some actual real world use cases. RS was inspired by the live coding movement, which is a movement of people that make music by writing code. You may also know of it as Algorave, algorithmic rave. Basically, the way it works is you type some code, you execute it, and musical things happen. Hence the name live coding. You make, you're making live music by writing program code and executing it in real time. There are many programming languages used by the live coding movement. Some examples are listed here. We have Chuck, Super Collider, and Tidal Cycles, which is a domain-specific language built on Haskell that uses Super Collider for sound generation. Here we see an example of Tidal Cycles. To my big surprise and annoyance, there is not, however, a language for programming music that is or is based on Lisp. The reason this was surprising to me was that if you think about it, a language that is based on lists is by far the most natural tool for sequencing notes and MIDI events. After all, what is a sequence other than, well, a list of notes and MIDI events? And furthermore, what is a MIDI note or a MIDI event other than a series of numbers? To play a MIDI note, for example, all you have to do is send a numeric code for starting the note, pitch value and a number that tells the MIDI instrument how loud the note should be played. Then, if you want to stop playing the note, you again send a numeric code, this time for stopping the note, as well as the pitch and the velocity of the note you want to stop playing. So in the first example, we will start middle C at full volume on the instrument at channel 1. The second set of numbers stops it. In the second example, we're going to play four MIDI notes in succession, eight sets of three numbers, which translate to middle C followed by D, E and F going up. So we have list of numbers, essentially, which means that as nice as those other live coding tools are, none of them will be better than our beloved bracket to program and manipulate them. Now this example, of course, is very simple, but you can maybe already imagine some really fancy things you could be doing simply by manipulating lists of numbers. So this is great, and since you can conceive of using Racket to program music, and since you can imagine Racket being a natural fit for it, it should probably be fairly easy to implement, right? Well, almost. Building my Racket live coding tool was probably not the hardest thing I ever did, and unlike most Racket people, I'm not actually a very clever programmer, but there were some, if not obstacles to overcome, then at least, shall we say, things to take care of. So let's take a look at the things I had to take care of. The first thing to take care of is that MIDI instruments, drum computers, synthesizers, or, you know, software plugins, want the binary data that contains their MIDI note data to be encoded in a certain way. This is not super difficult in principle, but it involves a lot of bit twiddling and interfacing with C, which is made more complicated if you want to run it on different operating systems. This was a bit more than I wanted to take on. Luckily, Racket comes with a whole bunch of batteries included, and if they're not included, then maybe the Racket package index has something you can use. And I did indeed find a wrapper that John Clements, whom you probably have heard of, wrote for a C library called RT MIDI, which was great because it meant the first challenge, how to turn lists of numbers into actual MIDI data, was taken care of. The second challenge had to do with timing. If you just play a note or a dozen notes for all I care, that's just making a sound. To actually make music, you have to space your notes in some sort of succession. You have to give them a duration and it's probably also a good idea to leave some silence between them every now and then to increase their impact. Music, if you will, is sound organized over time. And if you want to organize something over time, you need a timing device of some sort. Now, Racket, unfortunately, does not come with batteries for building timing devices. It has some tools you can use to build them, more or less, but actual reliable timers don't exist, as far as I know, anyway. So I had to build my own, which was a bit tricky, 
because for music, your timing has to be fairly good if you want it to sound decent. But in the end, I came up with something that worked well enough. RS, the record sequencer, essentially is nothing more than a main event loop and some tools for sending MIDI events to MIDI instruments, hopefully at some sensible moment in time. More specifically, it has a main timer loop, and to this main loop you can attach additional loops that actually trigger events. And then, presumably, those events are MIDI notes and other MIDI commands to make electronic or software instruments do things. Although, theoretically, those events could be anything. All RS does, really, is provide you with a mechanism for spacing events out over time. And because the events I personally wanted to space out over time are MIDI notes, it comes with a mechanism for creating MIDI notes. But if you wanted, you could use it to do other things, like create graphics or whatever. Event loop looked like then. But this is where the magic of racket comes in. First, we have an example of a hi hat loop. It does tss, 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 tss. And you see, it's a list of four HC events. HC stands for hi hat closed. If you send this list to an event loop, which is called a track in RS, it will space them evenly across the duration of the loop. Basically, what happens is that you tell each loop how long it can run before it needs to repeat, and then it will automatically calculate the length of each event in the list to make sure the entire list fits in the allotted time. So if you tell the event loop it must run for 200 milliseconds, the first hi-hat event will be triggered at 0 milliseconds, the second at 50, the third at 100, and the fourth at 150, and then the sequence repeats. So what does a sequence look like, then? But this is where the magic of racket comes in. First we have an example of a hi-hat loop. It does tss, 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 tss. And you see it's a list of four HC events. HC stands for hi-hat closed. If you send this list to an event loop, which is called a track in RS, it will space them evenly across the duration of the loop. Basically, what happens is that you tell each loop how long it can run before it needs to repeat, and then it will automatically calculate the length of each event in the list to make sure the entire list fits in the allotted time. So if you tell the event loop it must run for 200 milliseconds, the first hi-hat event will be triggered at 0 milliseconds, the second at 50, the third at 100, and the fourth at 150, and then the sequence repeats. Of course, since we're dealing with music, we don't use milliseconds, but we tell each event loop how fast it runs in beats per minute and how many steps it has, and then RS will calculate the milliseconds for you and you will never have to see them. And because it's a nice thing to have, you normally only need to set the beats per minute and the number of steps once for the main loop and then the individual event loops or tracks will inherit them. Although you can override them for each individual track should you so desire. So what do you do when you don't want to space things out evenly, but maybe leave some silence in between them? Easy, just supply an empty list where you want the silence to occur, like in the second example. What this does is tss, tss, tss. So this is neat, but it gets even better because events can themselves be lists of events. So I could even do what I do in the third example, which places a tss, tss at the end that is twice as fast as the other. Yes. And I don't know about you, but to me, this is really easy to read. The visual shape of that bit of code matches exactly what the sequence sounds like when you play it. And this, to me, is the greatest benefit of using Racket for sequencing music. And just to show you that this actually works, I'm going to send the sequences we're seeing here to a drum rack in Ableton Live. So let's go to a text editor. Okay, so I said sequences consist of lists of events. Now we'll take a look at what an event actually is. If you really want to get down and dirty and write your own event types, you can take a look at the code, specifically at the file rse.rkt. The E stands for event. For now, it's enough to know that an event is a struct called rse that has two elements, a procedure, which I consistently tend to call a function because I was raised wrong, and an offset, 
The function field is the, well, function or procedure that will be executed when the event loop, the track, decides it's time to do so. Or it can be a list of events, meaning you can nest sequences. The offset field contains a numeric value that lets you change the moment in time this specific event will be triggered. We'll get to those later. So what we have, in essence, is nothing more than the mechanism for executing functions at a specific time. And that really is all that sequencing using a live tool is. However, as simple as that concept sounds, it's really, really powerful. Because the sequence loop doesn't care about what an event is, just as long as it comes with an offset, you can harness the full power of Racket to create all sorts of really interesting events. You can create MIDI notes, MIDI control messages that control parameters on your synth. You could, theoretically, even write your own library for creating events for generating video that runs in sync with the music. But if you stick to just MIDI sequencing, there's already so much you can do. And here is a list. And all of this is possible because we're using Racket to program events, and at the end of this talk we're going to see some cool examples of this. However, before we can get fancy, the basics need to be in order. And here are the basics. We can play MIDI events, and we can set up MIDI instruments to send those events to. The first function causes a MIDI note to be played on a given instrument. The second function, which you would normally call before the first, sets up a MIDI instrument to talk to. Here's a real-world example. What this does is boom tss cha tss, boom tss, rest, tss, tss, tss. Remember that events can themselves be lists of events that get spaced out in the time that was allotted to the main event. Let's see this in action. Now, if we have an event loop that spaces out events, we can create rhythmic sequences, and if we can nest event loops, these sequences can become very intricate. But we're still missing something. We're stuck to a grid. In good, fancy sequencing programs, you can space your notes and events off the grid for a more human feel. And here you see an example. On the bottom line, we see kicks and snares, which are aligned exactly to the grid, and the hi-hats above it are spaced off the grid to create a more human feel. RS allows for this too. And this is what the offset field in the RS event struct is for. This field contains a multiplier between plus one and minus one that determines the offset, hence the name, of this event from its position on the grid. At minus 0.99999, it almost, but not quite, coincides with the previous event. At plus 0 0.99999, it almost, but not quite, coincides with the next event. The default value is 0, which means that the event is on grid. Which brings me to the topic of timing. And how good is it? Timing for RS is OK. I've run some tests on some machines, and while the timing isn't as accurate as that of dedicated sequencing software, under the right circumstances it will be good enough. It pretty much depends on your setup. If your computer runs a lot of processes simultaneously, timing will be terrible. If you close everything else, it will be okay, depending on the abilities of your hardware. What I found is that using a dedicated text editor such as Emacs or Vim and sending your code to a REPL is fine. What isn't fine, unfortunately, is DR Racket. Even with debug mode off, DR Racket is very slow and the timing will be off. So keep that in mind when you start experimenting. So there you have it. We can sequence notes and chords and thereby program our music in real time using Racket. Basically, if it's something you can program in Racket, you can sequence it. 